have a lot of words that are related to that. Settle down. In fact, let's stand, sit, you got your chairs, right? Settle down, settle, settle down, settle down, settle down. Okay, easy, next, easy. Calm down, easy, the raging eye, easy. Calm down, and that's an experience, calm down. Calm down, okay? Settle down, calm down. It's downtime, okay? Ah. Cool down. Hey, man, you're getting a little too hot up there. Cool down, man. Cool down, cool down, cool down. We're entering a different realm here. Easy. All right, settle down, calm down, cool down. <sighs> I don't think we ever say a calm up. All right. As we catch this beat of how things work, which I'll try to explain in this session, uh, then you'll get the response. If you calm down, there is an up and atom time. If you take a break, up time, listen up, be alert here. You should be in this phase of it, listen up. Okay. Implies you're in a better level. So we have a lot of words that uh, have been pointing to this process in our language. So in a certain way, it's not too foreign, all right? Ah, now, there are certain early clues. For example, uh, personal downtime, right? I can't do anymore. I can't. I can't do anymore. I have to downtime. Boom to be able to do more, okay? So I found that those uh, negative, uh, I can't. I can't find my keys, where are they? Easy. So we've learned a trick, I think a lot of people know. Stop trying to find them that way, settle. Then, oh, I remember where they are. They're in my winter coat, oh yeah, okay? So I can't, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do anymore. I've reached my limit. Oh, it's down time. It's down time. Take a break. It's down time. And if you do it right, then there'll be the resurgence. Okay. Again, it's very natural. Night time. Things get quieter, less activity. And then the next day, boom, it dawns a new day. And we're awake, we're fresh, we're ready to go. So it's in nature, this natural beat. They have different times, timings. Uh, so uh, faster ones, uh, gee, I don't know. Give me, give me a moment. Oh yeah, I remember now, it all comes back to me, da, da, da. So we have the short beats and we have longer beats, winter time. It's winter time, but then it'll be spring time, okay? In, in winter time, in winter time, all the plants do a similar thing. They all let go of being busy. They stop flowering. There are no more oranges. Okay. Something goes on here in the plants downtime and then come spring, they start to resurge with new blossoms and better crop of fruit, whatever. Okay, so again, the naturalness of down and resurgence.
In, in the human condition, we tend to put a little more emphasis on being up and busy and active. And a lot of people don't like even a hint of downtime. You should busy, busy, busy. You should take a rest, you tell somebody. They say, I can't, I, I, I gotta finish this. I'm too busy to rest. Okay. Uh, so some people fight it. Sometimes the system itself will insist that you downtime. You'll get sick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, go a little bit more. You'll trip over your own foot and break your ankle. You can't run around anymore. You've got a downtime. Uh, so even in the system, the system sometimes will enforce this. So for example, I learned a trick some years back. Uh, when I was starting to get a sense of having a cold, when it would come anywhere near me, I realized I was pushing a bit much and I would relax, relax whatever I was doing. Not just for a moment, but for whatever, a day, two, three, whatever. Because ah, I realized the cold for me was the beginnings of downtime. So I try to recognize it earlier and ah, without getting the cold. So I would purposely do a downtime to get past that cold. Okay. So it's natural, right? Ah. Careful again of the idea of things fighting a natural beat. Right. So I use dumb stories. You've heard me say this one before. You don't launch a boat into an oncoming wave. You wait, you ride with that wave, and then you launch the boat. Right? So don't, don't fight the system. Okay. Let's just hang out here for a moment. Ready? Standing. Easy. It's not just an idea. It's an actual experience. Down, down, down. Easy. Continue. Down. Settling down. Down. Okay. For me right now, it's starting to get quieter here. Okay. So down, time, quiet. Uh, I could maybe say the beginnings of stillness. So even in that in that moment, things changed a bit. My appreciation of downtime, my acceptance of downtime, and standing again. Okay. So sometimes the system is active and it doesn't want a downtime, but there are times where we have to downtime. But I'm waiting for the beats. I'm still on a rush here, for example. So I don't try to go down now. I'm being pushed. So easy. Be present. <sighs> Sense of balance here and now. Easy. And, and it, ah, there it is. There's the downtime beat. And deeper with experience, feeling, sense feeling, if you would, sense feeling. Boom, start to make a beat. Okay. Uh, do I need these for anything? Because it's echoing. Huh? You can't hear me. So, Sensei, we can hear you. Uh, okay. Uh, are you hearing an echo? Uh, yeah, yes, when I speak. Okay. Uh, Katya, could you please make sure there's no, uh, you turn down the volume on your iPad? Turn down the volume on your iPad. Okay, Sensei. Uh, would you like a question or are you just? Uh, yes, let's let's try a question for a moment. Yes, question. Well, uh, I I would like to ask a question, if I could, and that is that uh, 
uh, in preparing these slides uh, today, I came across a quote from O-sensei. It said, do not look upon the world with fear and loathing. Bravely face whatever the gods offer. So, okay, these beats are natural. They're going on. It's part of the cre how creation is ongoing creating. Uh, they're natural. Uh, try to learn a bit how they work, I'm trying to help you here, and learn to ride with them, to be in harmony with them. So, an English version of what O Sensei said. Okay. Because if you don't know they're there and they start to upbeat at a certain time, you'll think something evil is pushing you. Or on the reverse, on the downtime, you'll think, oh my God, what's happening? I feel like I'm going to drown. So don't make an enemy of natural forces. Okay? Close enough. Ah, let me look over here and see where we are. Okay. Uh, So, inhaling, exhaling, okay, is a minor downtime. Inhale, exhale. We use that in, uh, in physical movement. Uh, uh, in, in the old barbell days. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay, I don't think you can throw a good punch inhaling. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So we've used it before. Those are short forms of down plus, down plus its partner. Okay, so again, there are different times. There's a one second beat. There's a, wait, give me a moment. And after a moment, oh, okay, now let's do it. Uh, so there's the moment beats. Okay. Then you got the 15 minute coffee break downtime. Okay. Then you've got to, I've worked for eight hours. I'm getting tired here. I want to go home and go to bed. And you sleep for eight hours. So it's an eight hour beat. Okay. Then you have the uh, beat of winter. Okay. Winter down, spring up. And so anyway, the beats have all those alternate timings. Is that an okay word? Ah. See, standing again, chair again. In settling down and continuing. Continue to settle, a little sense of deeper, deeper, deeper. What's your sense of that deeper? I mentioned before, a sense of calmness there. It feels quieter. I'm getting a little reaction, but shouldn't I do something? Hush, easy. Settle down some more. And that's a hint of a fear in going down here. Any comments on that? Any react, any fearful reactions to down timing? That's a question. We'll take a second. Grab your coffee. Give me my coffee. And so, Sensei, someone has written uh, uh, a question. Thank you. How is how is downtime related to letting go? You have to let go of what you're hanging on to to go downtime. Okay. So that would be something you would do early. Uh, I'm really hanging on to this. That person cannot do downtime. They're hanging on. So, so that's a trick of the trade. Realize you're hanging on. Let go of that. Let go of that. 
get a little closer to the body, body, body. And then the body is utilized as a reference for settling under. Okay, so, so if you are hanging on, you got to let go of that. And that's your first move. Then there's a second move, maybe a third move as you continue. So there's a pattern to it. You have to catch your own pattern. You have to know if you're hanging on. You have to recognize the signs of it. Okay. Uh, you see people when we're having a conversation, if they're pissed off at the boss or something, and, and they say what they want to say, and you heard them, and you're kind of finished listening, but they want to continue, and they say the same things over again. Uh, and it's like they're hanging on to it. It's like, okay, man, I've heard you. Settle down, would you? Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. So you have to catch your own hanging on to pattern and learn the games of how to, how to deal with it. But it's kind of simple enough. Yeah. And, and Sensei, just, a, there's a, another question very related. Uh, once I let go of what I'm hanging on to, how, how can I be confident that I'm going to not sort of fall down? How do, how do I know that I'll be able to get up again? How do I... It's, you know. Don't sit on the floor, sit on a chair. <laughs> uh, okay, see, that's the fear of, here we go. Can you see my little man? Yeah. Okay, we're so used to living in this upper light world. A lot of ideas about things, okay? Ideas, idea. Might be a few other words there, but we're so used to living up here. This settle under downtime, that's for a lot of people brand new, really. Even though it's always been around, uh, they're not, haven't been trained or taught to utilize it. They've been taught to do more up here. Okay. And so when we start to shift from this world into its partner world, the underworld of things, it's a little scary. Yeah. So well, uh, re re remind me what the question was. Uh, well, the question, Sensei, the question was, you know, if I go down, like, how do I know yeah. I'm going to get up? And you said okay. stand in a chair, it's a lot easier. But, <laughs> yeah. but okay. there are, now there's starting to be a lot of questions coming in. And, and some of them <laughs> are, down there is kind of dark and yes. I don't, you know, unknown. And Yes, yes, know, yes, uh, it is What's unknown. down there? What's, people are asking, <laughs> right, what's down right, there? Right, right, right. And I, up here, want to know what's down there. I want to know what's down there. Go for it. You got to be a little gutsy. Okay. I can explain a lot of things. You can probably read a lot of things about this from up here, but that is not the experience of here. This must be experienced. And, and we have a lot of fears because it is dark. When I look at it, it's dark. When I look at it, I don't understand it because it speaks a little bit different language. In your system, you know the language, but up here you forgot the language. Okay. Uh, and so, okay, let me, let me tell you a trick. At one time when I was first catching on to the depth of things, all right? Uh, and the same thing, it was deep and dark and I took an, kind of an ocean type approach where, where this was a, like an ocean. And when I first start settling into it, I uh, sense feel the water as I was going lower and lower and the water was here. And right here, I start to panic because although it's not sense experience, still the water was here. I can't breathe water. I would panic a little bit. And I learn how to be easy there and continue a little bit more, okay? Trusting I wasn't going to drown. <laughs> it's, it's experiential imagination. 
right? But there was the fear of drowning, okay? So I learned a trick there. What I started to do was take a diving bell. So I would put myself in a diving bell and go deeper into the ocean where I could kind of sense around, sort of scan around. And if it felt like it was benign, is that the right word? It was, oh, okay. Then I knew I had to experience it, so I would go down to that same level without the diving bell. I personally would have an experience. So I used the diving bell because I was like every other human. I was afraid I was going to drown. I'd never be able to get out of it. So the diving bell was my first introductory trick to going deeper, flavoring that it was okay, and then personally, fully, experientially covering the same depth. That trick of the trade, huh? Cool, huh? <laughs> uh, so there'll be different fears. Uh, we even get them, for those of you who do Aikido, we even get that fear. Oftentimes when I ask people to ground down a bit, somebody will say, uh-oh, something's wrong. I feel like I'm stuck in this mud, as if it's holding them down, maybe even pulling them down a little bit. And a lot of folks get fearful just at that level. Uh-oh, I'm getting stuck. I won't be able to move. It was not time to move. This is just a pre to hitting a better level where you can move at a better level. Okay? But people not knowing that would start to panic just on that deeper mud getting stuck feeling. So I understand we have fears. Uh, part of this layout, hopefully, is at least getting some knowledge, hopefully a little experience, uh, with how it works. But still, you're the one that has to jump into it, to settle into it, okay? Right. But let's give you a little flavor. As you, okay, short form. Okay, again, I tried to show you an Aikido. I did uh, one move. Uh, so we first introduced this concept in simple manner, right? So he holds me with two hands. I can't move. On the upper level, I can't move. Oh, I can't. Okay, I'll go down a bit, hit a level, and then it, it's dawning again. It's a resurgence. Okay. Uh, so I've always tried to show some of the simple basics through an Aikido technique. Right? Can't come out anymore? Oh, settle down, get more ground, and then you can come up and out better. So, and those are done within a moment or two, but they're done to give you an example experience of how it works. We're almost on a roll, where are we? Sensei, people are, uh, questions are coming in now fast and furious. You've struck a chord. <laughs> You've struck yeah. a chord. And so one the of the questions, yeah, well, uh, yeah. one of the questions is that, you know, it sounds great to say, oh, you have to let go and settle into downtime. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are now being forced into downtime against yeah. us, uh, not uh, what they want I'll to cover doing. that. I want to do two phases here, hopefully. One, I want to introduce downtime more personal. And then okay. before we finish, hopefully, I want to introduce downtime as the whole system is downtiming. I want to sort of keep them uh, as two separate subjects, although the pattern is the same. So can we hold that off? Certainly. So can there's a, with, another with question personal. more personal, yeah. on a more okay. personal level. Uh, Someone wrote, downtime also feels like going deeper inward. Oh, yes. Touching, oh. On, fear, touching on oh. fears 
of knowing oneself like the fear of looking in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely it's inner work. I'm not going down. All my work is inner work. I don't go down out there. I go down in here. This is an inner world of down. My ocean is in here. It's not an ocean out there. It's all work. Proper work is inner work. So, yeah, inner. Did I miss something there? No, that's... Okay. Uh, so, again, our fear is based on that we've been living up here. Let's call it the light world. We've been living up here in the light world thinking that that's everything, okay? And it's not. It's a major half, if you would. Uh, but it has a counterpart that's very important. We're just not used to it, okay? So, so uh, I won't ask you to go to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, I'll just ask you to dip your feet in a little bit. In fact, let's do that. Ready? Settle down a bit. Settle down. Settle down. That's not an idea. It's a body feeling. Settle down to your feet floor. Settle down. Settle down. And someplace there, boom, is the beat, the counter beat up. Settle down to a certain level, and, 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 boom, it beats up. Okay? So I just want you to dip your feet. I'm not asking that, what's the word uh, Campbell uses? Abyss. Mm. Okay, where is it? Abyss, abyss. Joseph Campbell, it is by going down into the abyss, whoa, that we recover the treasures of life. So the sharp guys are trying to tell you something, okay? But that's red. Somebody heard him say that. To experience it, that's what you got to do. But again, I'm not going to ask you to Throw yourself fully into the abyss. But let's take it a stage at a time. Let's come down for a moment. <sighs> and, and boom, here comes the upbeat. Ah, gee, I feel a little fresher. Okay. The, the sharks didn't get me. No crocodiles bit me on the ass. Let's try it again. Easy, down down to the floor and a little bit deeper, easy, deeper, deeper, and someplace there, boom, I feel stronger, ah, I feel stronger, my voice is starting to change, I feel like, throw a punch, I got charged, let's do it one more time, easy, Ah, downtime. A physical experience, easy. Down, down. Okay. Feels a little quieter. Sense is a little darker. Okay. Okay, down. And, and someplace there's a floor. Boom. I feel taller. I feel a little more uh, capable. Did you not feel a plus on that little game that we just did? The point being uh, that as you begin to realize, if you trade yourself in, give of this self through that pattern, there'll be a floor, and from the floor starts a resurgence. It's springtime. And with that resurgence, your character develops. So I felt stronger, I felt taller, I felt more capable. 
okay? There was a, from that springtime beat, the character was enhanced. I'm not baby Bobby anymore, okay? I could probably lay that out a bit clearer. But what you play the simple levels of that downtime beat, and as you get a little comfortable with the simple ones, then we'll try bringing you down a bit deeper, or you on your own will go, hey, I'm getting pretty comfortable doing this level. Let me see what the next level is. And then you go down a little bit longer, a little bit deeper, a little wider, sense to the next floor where springtime will spring up. And so sensei, we're, we're getting questions on this concept. So on the one hand, okay. on the one hand, it sounds like there's a natural, you're saying there's a natural rhythm. There's an, that's how it works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course there's a natural rhythm. And, on the other hand, uh, uh, somebody writes, uh, maybe we shouldn't focus on getting back up. Maybe we should sort of linger in the downtime and if, there's no need to smart, push ourselves up. Yes, yes. If you're smart, you'll, you'll set some time aside. It's called meditation, maybe, where you get to go lower. You just hang out and soak for a bit get the flavor of it, uh, acclimatize yourself, acclimatize. Don't divers do that? Don't they go down and hang out for a while and acclimatize before they go deeper? Is that not, that's normal, you see, we do it. I'm asking you to do what every diver in town knows how to do, has to do. Okay. So it's a natural beat. Oh, God, we eat up time here. Uh, now, oh, sensei, for those of you who are not Aikido's, Uyashiba of Aikido. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a story about him, for those of you who aren't Aikido, where uh, in Manchuria, he ran afoul of a bunch of bandits, and they were shooting at him. And... Uh, at that time, he, quote, learned how to feel, sense the bullets coming at him, and he would move and the bullets would go by. Okay, so I was talking to him about that. <clears throat> Hello, where are you? <sighs> okay. flying in, bullets flying in Manchuria, I went, he said he went calm. Now, I think people in reading what he said would think their nervous mind, oh my God, they're shooting at me, I better calm my mind. That's not what he was talking about. That's upper person's idea of calm. I'm nervous, let me, let me calm down here. The, he was going much deeper with this. He's pretty advanced at this time. Not an Osensei yet, but heading that way, very close. Okay. At the time, O-sensei says, I didn't understand what had happened. That was an unusual thing, even for me. When I was in the Russo-Japanese War, he was a soldier when he was a young man, I could sense the bullets flying around, but they weren't necessarily flying at me. In the previous conversation, he said, it was a bit different because they were pointing at me. He was the target. And this was the first time he was the target. Uh, I didn't know I could do that. The calmness, I think I mentioned to you earlier, it was a different texture of calm. Uh, texture is not an idea. Texture is a deeper, much deeper, fuller experience of the calm down. Okay, and this was a whole other level of it for, for him. It was a different texture of calm. And then I have to intersperse here. I knew where the bullets were going to go. I'd say, and then as he let this process unfold, I knew where the bullets were going to go before they hit. 
Okay, so he hit his level, not this level, but his level of base, if you would. Uh, so he down time went calm, calm uh, to a level, much better level than this. And at that level, the springtime resurgence changed this, this character uh, the guy who's scared because the bullets are coming at him never had that happen before into a different character, a different level of him where he could sense the bullets. He would move before they went by, then they would go by. Okay. Uh, so he followed the same pattern and that's so the depth of that calm so fascinated him when he came home from Manchuria, he really majored in hanging out, studying, not studying, but experiential studying, uh, the fullness of what was going on. Because see, again, here he said, I didn't understand what happened. So he had to go over it again and replay it and get comfortable and then naturally get knowledge about what was going on. Okay, so again, very advanced, but the pattern is the same. Is that okay so far? Uh, thank you, thank yeah. you, Sensei. I just want to give you a time check. We have yeah. a, a little less than 20 minutes remaining. Yeah, I know we're eating up time. Uh, well, it tastes good, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, a couple uh, back again. I thought maybe this would break into two sessions, personal and then the world situation, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, here's Bruce Lee. He's talking about root. Root is a very good base, okay? So wherever Bruce is at with, with it, it's a very good base, and he calls it root, okay? Uh, so, again, I don't know what level Bruce was at, but he did some good work, uh, and he says some great things. Uh, Cliff, what'd you do? Okay. If the root is right, so will be the manifestation. If you really, uh, that's why I told the previous person to settle there and soak there and get the flavor of it. Uh, if it's, uh, oh, come on, what are you doing? If the root is right, one more time, see, I can hold this thing here. Okay, so if the root is neglected, then what should spring, spring up, spring? Uh, the manifestation cannot be, if you don't root or get some depth, that that springs up won't be in balance. It'll be screwed up, my word. Uh, if you do it right, what should spring from it will be well ordered. If we present ourselves well, if we downtime through this dark, calm, quiet, calm is a good word, uh, through this, through that, this part of things, then what should spring downtime winter springs back up. If we do this properly, what springs up is very nice and balanced and mixes, creates the next character you. Okay, you gotta be orderly. Oh, since I was hot on orderly, you gotta get your patterns right. They're simple, but your math has to be right. Okay. Uh, oh, since I had a tree, one, one more. Find it.
Shimano Sensei. Okay, here's another Bruce. See to understand the root and not the branches. What he's talking about there is uh, these are branches up here and they flower and they fruit and all that stuff. Uh, but if you understand the root, the root, the root, if you not just understand it, but soak, drop down, drown, and experience it. I lost that again. Damn, I'm not very good with these things, as you can tell. And Sensei, if I could interrupt, uh, there's yeah. another question. The root is the real knowledge. Real knowledge breeds body feel. The real experience and the knowledge that's there is body feel. It's good. Thank you, Bruce. Yes. Yes. So, Sensei, the question is that uh, how did you come to trust this process? The universe. Okay, I was a, a meditator and I was very good up here. Okay. And I'm kind, of, I'm kind of natural at meditation. I do say so myself. And so I meditated. I went to finer dimension. I went to finer dimension. I went to finer dimension, to finer dimension. I knew I was going good because I bumped into a lot of famous yogis up here. Uh, and way up here, I bumped in what appeared to be the top. Okay. I bumped through the, I went through the angelic choirs and stuff and I almost looked like the Celestine Chapel here. I said, oh, wow, I think it's the top of the universe. And I went up and there was like sort of nothing. And I thought, is this it? So sort of like, eh. And this voice says to me, Nado, go down. And I thought, what the hell is go down? Because I'm a basic meditator, finer, yes, finer, yes. I'm, I'm of that school. God is up there, heaven's up there. Finer dimensions are up there. Fortunately, I was also an athlete, so I stuck to the body, that helped. Uh, but anyway, I heard go down. Take orders. Okay. The universe or whatever that great voice was says go down. Okay, I gotta figure out what is go down. So I started to play with settling down. So I uh, created for myself a couple of games. One was I would practice meditating. I'd go up one level and then I would like take an elevator down to one level under. Then I'd come back in the elevator as a meditator and I'd go up to level two meditation and then down to level two under. And I begin to play this elevator game. So again, the underworld started to show to me because level one, kind of getting the sense of it. I always thought it was like a department store. I'm in the elevator and when I hit that next floor, I sort of walk out of the elevator a bit and I scan the floor of this department store. It has a certain texture to it, okay? And, and I get the flavor of it. Then I'd continue up to three, down to three. So I played this elevator game was one game. Uh, and then I started to get more involved and that's when I ran into the ocean style where I would go down through water. Uh, anyway, I started to get fairly good with that. I didn't understand what was happening, but I, I, I got fairly good. Uh, Bottom of the ocean for me uh, was King Neptune. King, K-I-N-G, K-I-N-G, King Neptune. Uh, and it was a very fancy place, you know, golden treasures on the ocean floor. And he, that's his domain and stuff. I was in a good place, but I didn't know how things work. Now I'm coming back to it again, because uh, I have a better sense of how things work. Uh, so uh, the elevator game worked for me, the uh, slowly soaking through levels like a diver uh, worked for, for me. Uh, levels of water, uh, it's a good example. The top part of the water of whatever, a pond, 
put your hand in, it's warm. Stick your hand in a bit deeper, it starts to get cooler. So uh, again, when you're settling down deeper, of course there's going to be a, a level that's warmer or whatever. And then as you continue down deeper, it's going to be a level that's cooler. It's just different floors, different dimensions are showing. Okay? Um, and you'll probably find your own tricks for going deeper, being calmer, doing the downside of things. Sensei, thank you, yes. thank you so much. Uh, another time check. Uh, we're inside of yeah. 10. I got a clock here. Okay, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. Uh, and so, uh, how does this uh, how does this take us to Osensei's Aikido? What would Osensei be saying if he were here now? What is Osensei uh, saying to you, for that matter? <laughs> this is a process that he used. He, again, he made his major work when he went calm. And he touched a level where it sprung up, creating that level of U Ueshiba that could not be affected by bullets. He used that pattern. You don't have to go to try to be as the root. You don't have to go to the root yet, but just kind of know it's there. You go through stages. And in Aikido, uh, okay, bang is a technique. They're grabbing, bang, and moving, okay? It's okay, but I don't quite feel full enough. Ooh, negative. It's my downtime. Easy, settle, open, and click, boom. Much more definite step, and the body seemed to move a little fuller. That's how I try to teach Aikido people. I'm sorry, but hello? Are you with me here? I don't teach. Okay, here, now here's a trick over here. Now let's come over there and do another trick. That's not developmental work. That's not Osensei's Aikido. Might be what he called the sport, not sure, but you get busier out there trying to be better out there, but you don't get better in here. You don't align to the truth of the universe, which we have to do eventually. Boom. It's okay. Easy. This is a downtime. Easy. I'm hitting another floor. Boom. Bang! Stronger. Much more definite. Ah, this back support. All I did was a different level floor that's under. That's all I did. Okay. Uh, they're holding me with two hands. I can't move. Oh, it's downtime. I hit a better floor. Springtime. Ah. Creates a different character who functions. We could do receptive as a type of downtime. Let's see. Okay. Ah, I don't have the rule. Receptive, positive. We could use receptive as a type of downtime. I want to get them. I know you do. You're in the upper light world. But you're going to clash. So it must be downtime. Now it's springtime. So within that boom, bang, the series went on. Okay. So that's why, for example, I might ask people to hang out here for a bit and feel this, experience this, because it's very meaningful as part of that pattern. And a lot of people don't want to feel this. They want to learn how to get him. I want to get him but they're not gonna really develop, you know, Sensei's dialogue. Are we okay so far? My God, we ate up time. Ugh. Wow, easy, easy. So this fear thing, I think, came up 
people seem to respond. So again, yes, it's strange, but it's, it's your universe. You just forgot. You got so tied up in here that you forgot. Easy, as you settle and open, easy the eye. Ah, it, the memory of it will all come back. The language of it will come back. Okay, but we got torqued in so tight, different discussion on a different day, uh, that we tend to be in the upper light world and we don't have a good working relationship with the underworld. And yet it's half of our whole system. Okay. And it's and it's beautiful. You think this is pretty good? This is fantastic. It's a beautiful system. When I can't do anymore, all I have to do is quiet down, and and boom, I'm recharged. You take a nap. You're tired. You take a nap. You wake up and you're ready to go again. Hello. We're just saying, understand what's going on there. Okay. Running out of time? Uh, 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 we're in the final, final stretch. Okay. I don't have time for long-winded stories. Uh, down, 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 time. Bob, it's okay if we run yeah. over a bit. If you need to tell a story, if you got something uh, you think is pertinent. What happened to my newspaper? Gotcha. Where's my newspaper? Dear God, can't trust anybody around here. Ah. Okay. This is an upside of anxiety and the curse of panic written by a PhD stress scientist, professor in the Department of Psychiatry. Uh, I can't find it. If we are thinking from our emotional brain, a tighter eye, uh, we are more likely to make mistakes and bad decisions. Predictable uh, people under panic. Uh, so let's settle down and get to a different level of us brain. Uh, I'm looking for something I can't find it. Damn it. I'm sure I underlined it, but it's gone. Anyway, this lady, uh, before she got caught up in uh, the corona stuff, uh, was working on a project where they caught a relationship between uh, putting uh, depressed people in hot water or steam rooms that they found some relationship there, okay? Now, here's how my brain works. They're depressed. It's downtime for them. They put them, for me, about three levels down on, on my map. Uh, there's brown, there's fertile soil, there's bedrock, and shortly after that, it starts to get hot. There's a bit of a volcano there, and it's fiery. <sighs> when you hit that fiery, then it's spring times, and I feel better. So they're catching a relationship between forcing them, helping them into this hot level, okay? And they're getting some kind of result. The depressed people are getting out of the depression, okay? So very interesting. So anyway, that's how my system works. It's like, oh, they're getting a result. What really happened? What's really going on? with hot. Well, I know hot is a certain level of down. And, and, and springtime changes the character. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 
there's another yeah. question that uh, I'd like to share, and that is okay. uh, one of the people listening today is, is saying, well, I, I get that it's a process, that downtime is a process. Yeah. Is fear one of the natural steps in that process? For those that have it, yeah. Uh, who was it? Was that book Iron John or something? Yeah. Popular. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He heard that there was a, a pool outside of town that uh, if anybody got near it, they were sucked into it. And this guy was visiting through the town. He said, "Oh, really?" And he dashed out to that place and he jumped in. He didn't have any fear. He knew. He knew there was something that could happen if he really jumped into this pool. So people are going to be different. Some are going to be much better with calm. Maybe they have some pre-life experience with spending time in calm. Well, since it was fairly natural, fairly natural with, with it, uh, it didn't, I don't believe I never heard him say anything about it horribly scaring him. Uh, but so it's going to be those that are, oh my God, I won't go. To, I don't know, let me try it out. To, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. You soak deeper and deeper. Ah, so it's going to vary as to who the hell you are. But it doesn't matter where you start. This is here. And if we get this, we do it properly, it's a plus. So it doesn't matter if you start here or here or here or here. Still a plus. Okay. When you're in the fifth grade, you don't get uh, thrown off because somebody's in the eighth grade. You accept it. And you do the work in the fifth grade so you can get to the sixth grade. Okay, You don't stop yourself because somebody's a little bit better. You know? So start wherever you start. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sensei. God, we ate up so much time. I uh, can't believe it. We're going to have to do one session just on energy, body, movement and stuff to get you moving a bit more. But are you okay with your chairs? Make sure you have your chairs. It's a very simple form. I think we could also add a Tuesday class. I can tell you're warming up to the... <laughs> I want to thank you so much for you know, adapting to this form and, and being with us tonight. Okay, we'll try to clarify whatever next time. Uh, yeah, feel free with the questions. Give me a direction. Because uh, I knew there was fear, but I didn't realize so many people. I, I've forgotten uh, how scary that is. I shouldn't have forgotten. I see it in the dojos. When I ask people to settle down, some, oh, no way. I'm not going to drop into my hip. No, it's getting too close to under. Uh, so... I'm aware of it, but it, you brought it back to me. Okay, thank you.